welcome to the Gurnal series. Today we are going to learn about the hematological changes in pregnancy. Hematological changes don't just say about the blood volume, plasma volume, what we see. It also includes your leukocytosis and also your proteins and platelets. Everything should be included when you are asked about this question. Here you will learn about how to answer the theory question, MCQ question or by my voice. Everything will be covered. So let us begin. What is the hematological changes? Since we are seeing every organ, there is increased blood flow, increased blood flow. So how will it increase? Firstly, the blood volume should raise. The blood volume is raised in pregnancy. It starts from 6th week of pregnancy and peaks at around 30 to 34 weeks of pregnancy. Almost blood volume raises by 30 to 40 percent. Now coming to the plasma volume. Does the only blood volume raise, the plasma volume also equally raises. This plasma volume also starts raising from 6th week and plateaus from 30 weeks. It almost equally raises to that of the blood volume. The blood volume will raise to 30 to 40 percent whereas plasma volume parallelly raises to 40 to 50 percent. So which is the maximum that raises? The plasma volume is raised more. Coming to the RBC volume. The RBC also will raise. RBC raises by 20 to 30 percent. Your blood volume raised by 30 to 40, whereas plasma volume raised by 40 to 50. But the RBC raises only by 20 to 30 percent. Though there is increase in RBCs, the increase is not proportionate. The plasma volume raises more. Hence, this leads to your physiological anemia in pregnancy. Though there is increase in the RBC, the hemoglobin is falling because of this. The concentration is less, but there is a raise. The raise is by 20 to 30 percent. That is why the, since this is only 20 to 30 percent raise and this is raised by 40 to 50 percent, there is fall in hemoglobin by almost 2 grams at term pregnancy. So now you know the blood volume and the plasma volume raised by 40 to 50 percent whereas the RBCs are raised by only 20 to 30 percent. Why this physiological anemia should happen? Why should the RBCs raise less? They also can raise more. Now why is this happening? So this is also a physiological mechanism. This is a protective mechanism to help the mother to prevent the complications. Let us see what are the advantages of this difference. Firstly, as you all know, pregnancy per se is a hypercoagulable state. Because of this hemodilution, the blood viscosity will reduce. This prevents from unnecessarily blood clotting, thromboembolism, all these things are prevented. Hence, the blood viscosity will reduce. And also, the exchange between the vessels will be easier. The fetal material circulation will be easier since the viscosity is less. And the oxygen will be easily released by the RBCs. That is why this difference is there. And also, as you all know, there is some amount of blood loss after delivery. Be it a normal delivery with 500 ml and cesarean with 1000 ml blood loss or a postpartum hemorrhage. All this blood loss will be a hemodiluted blood and there is less loss of hemoglobin or the iron. That is why this loss is okay and not affecting the mother. And also this prevents from supine hypotension because of the diluted blood. These are the benefits of the hemodilution. That is why hemodilution is so important. And this is very important and this percentage should be mentioned in your exams and will be asked in your MCQs. Next, coming to the immune system or the leukocytes. The neutrophilic leukocytosis can be seen. That is, the increase in the neutrophil count or the leukocyte count almost from 8,000 cells to 20,000 cells during labor can be seen. There is increase in the neutrophilic leukocytosis. Okay, next, coming to the proteins, the plasma proteins. Yes, there is increase in the plasma proteins. The plasma proteins which is around 180 grams will raise up to 230 grams. So there is around 50 grams of increase in plasma protein. Again, due to hemodilution, the plasma protein concentration will reduce. There is decrease in the concentration whereas the plasma protein is raised. Next, coming to the platelets or the coagulation system. As you all know, the platelet count normal is 1.5 lakhs and above. But in pregnancy, due to hemodilution, there might be some amount of reduction that is thrombocytopenia. 
This in pregnancy is called gestational thrombocytopenia and it is okay to have gestational thrombocytopenia. It is not going to lead to any complication if the patient is having 50,000 to 1 lakh 50,000 count anywhere in between with no other signs and symptoms. Then it is okay. It is not going to lead to any complications. Next coming to the fibrinogen. As you all know, pregnancy is a hypercoagulable state. Because of this, the fibrinogen, which was 250 to 300 milligrams in non-pregnant, raises to 300 to 600 milligrams in pregnancy. And also, the fibrinolytic activity, the fibrin degradation or the time taken to lyse the clot is delayed in pregnancy until 15 minutes after delivery. Why so? Again, this is a protective mechanism. Why only till 15 minutes? By then the placenta will be delivered. After that the fibrinolytic activity will become come back to its normal time. That is when the clot formation will happen and the uterus will clot and the bleeding will stop. That is why till 15 minutes after delivery only the fibrinolytic activity will be delayed. After that it comes back to its normal state. Next, coming to the coagulation factor, as you all know, there are some factors which reduce and some factors which raise and the reducing factors are less in number and easy to remember. Only two factors will reduce in number that is your 11 and 13 are reducing whereas the others like 2, 7, 8, 10, 9, all this will increase in number. Okay, so easy to remember are your 11 and 13 which will reduce and commonly ask in your MCQs. And these coagulation factors will come back to normal within two weeks after delivery. Thank you for watching this session. Hope you liked it. All your queries are clear. And if you still have any doubts, you can refer to our book that is PC Dutta Textbook of Obstetics. Thank you. Have a great day.